What's going on, everybody? Hope you're all having a fantastic day today. Now, I have to go ahead and apologize for yesterday's uh, live stream. Usually, I go ahead and stream for about six hours, but for some strange, awkward reason, I was only able to stream for about an hour and 50 minutes until my Wi-Fi just completely cut out as usual. For some strange reason, Comcast just absolutely hates me. Does anybody else run into this issue? Because seriously, it's happening way too frequently, and I'm honestly considering changing my internet provider because it's not working right now. You know, this is my gig right now. I need to stream and I need to make YouTube videos. And without internet, that's a very serious thing. And it's not like we're not paying or anything like that. Everything is good to go. It's just they are stupidly unreliable in my area. Again, if you guys have any similar issues or if you think, you know, any other internet provider is better than Comcast, leave it down in the comment section. I'm very curious and I need some different, you know, thoughts and opinions on this whole topic. But again, I was going ahead and I was streaming Battle Bit, as you see here in the background gameplay, for, like I said, about an hour and 50 minutes on live stream. And I gotta say, Battlefield, <laughs> oh man, uh, with all these other alternatives coming out here, it's just going to become harder and harder for people to want to actually sink in time to Battlefield 2042, or even want to return to Battlefield 2042. Now, BattleBit is a game that pretty much resembles Battlefield 2042 in every single way, but the difference is, is it looks like Roblox or Minecraft. But, 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 I know, even though it looks a little different and off to a lot of people, I promise you when I say it is extremely fun, it is truly extremely fun. Now, they did have a first playtest, which was free to play, and it was rumored that once that playtest closed, it was going to open back up at the cost of $15. But luckily, they opened it back up for a second playtest, completely free once again. So, if anybody out there wants to go ahead and give this game a try, it is free to play on the Steam Marketplace. It's not on console, only on computers, but I highly suggest checking it out. It's not hard to run whatsoever. It's very easy to run. And when I tell you the population of this game is absolutely popping, it is popping. I mean, just go ahead and look at this clip right here that I recorded, just scrolling down the whole server browser of completely packed lobbies with 100 plus players, 200 plus players that have lobbies capped at like 60 plus or something like that. But every single lobby is basically either halfway full or almost completely full to the max. It's insane. The game is popping. And when I recorded this, it's a Monday. Keep in mind, it's Monday at around 11. I think that was at 11 in the morning. So it's the beginning of the week when people have class, they have work, they have things to do, and the game is still completely popping. Imagine this game when it hits prime time for gaming hours or even on the weekends. You know, when everybody is off from work or class and they have more time to go ahead and play games, imagine how many players are going to be literally circulating on this title. You can even go to the Steam charts and look there and see that BattleBit is stomping at Battlefield 2042 when it comes to player count. I mean, this game is topping around 12,000 concurrent players at all times on it, while Battlefield 2042 at its peak can usually get around 3,000 players, and that's on an extremely good day. Typically, it's around 2,000, maybe 2.5k players, sometimes even less, which is extremely embarrassing, considering that this game, Battle Bit, was only developed by, I believe, it's three people now, but I think when this game initially started, it was only one individual who was just messing around and, you know, trying to make something out of it. And then, obviously, as you see here, it blew up, so he's getting more people on the project, there's more people developing stuff with this game. It's pretty cool and interesting to see, you know, someone start out with absolutely nothing, and pretty much steal the whole Battlefield community away from a billion dollar corporation. And yes, I understand. Battlefield is a much more complex game to design. It needs hundreds of people on it in order to make it. You're looking at this game right here. Like I said, it looks like Roblox. It looks like Minecraft. It's clearly not as hard to make this game run as something like Battlefield 2042. But does that mean game design is easy? Not in any type of way. Obviously, coding and game development is a very complex art, and to have three people be able to put something together like this that has better destruction, better gameplay, better hit detection, better servers, better scoreboard for Christ's sakes. It has pretty much every single feature that we've been craving with Battlefield 2042 plus more. The map selection in this game is phenomenal, and again, even though the graphics aren't out of this world, what it really comes down to is the design of the map. It could look absolutely beautiful, but if it's not well designed, nobody is going to have a good time. And even with 200 plus players in one singular lobby, yes, it gets kind of frantic and hectic at times, but at the end of the day, the flow is still there. And as an infantry player, someone who loves to play as infantry, I feel that I personally can enjoy this game. Unlike in Battlefield 2042, 
where every single situation and every single map, I would much rather prefer sitting in a Nightbird or a tank or any other vehicle besides running around on foot, which is the complete opposite. I've never been like that a day in my life when it comes to the Battlefield franchise. It has always been strictly infantry gameplay. I love running around as a medic, healing my teammates, supporting my teammates. I love tank hunting or even going to try to shoot down helicopters out of the sky. I love running around as an infantry player and engaging with the environment around me, but it sucks ass in Battlefield 2042. It is so stupidly bad that it just, like I said, everybody's leaving that game and they're going back to Battlefield 5. <laughs> they're literally going back to Battlefield 5, one of the most hated Battlefield games out there, just to get a better Battlefield experience. But back to what I was saying, Battle Bits and map designs are actually surprisingly extremely good. And that is absolutely insane to say, because map design is not an easy task to do. This is something that, once again, takes schooling, it takes time, it takes learning to understand how to put together a well-constructed map. It's not easy, and one to three people were able to put together all of these maps. I think there's like, what, at least two times the amount of maps in this game compared to Battlefield 2042. And all of them are paced perfectly. Again, the fact that one to three people were able to do this, while there's a team of 100 plus individuals over at DICE working specifically only on that one thing. Keep in mind, the people working on Battle Bit, they have to do everything. It's not just one person working on maps. No, he is doing everything in this game, okay? There is literally a specific team at DICE who work on maps. That's all they do. That's all they put years and years and years and years of time into. And we get that garbage compared to something like this. It makes no logical sense at all. I mean, even in Battle Bit, there's more customization on your weapons. It's absolutely absurd. And the amount of grind factor towards that gun as well is insane. There's so many levels for you to grind towards and so many weapons to unlock and things to do that your time is going to constantly be... Uh, going towards something beneficial and I don't know if you're actually going to want to take this game seriously or if this is just going to be a side game for me personally I'm going to be honest it's more of just a side game for me I'm going to tend to stick to the other games for now to cover them obviously for my channel but I will dabble in this game from time to time but if you are seriously just trying to find something fun to hold you over a little bit until you know the next season comes around when all these new FPS games drop this might be it for you again free to play right now tons of attachments tons of weapons tons of map designs uh, it's, it's, it's honestly pretty darn good. And the combat system is phenomenal. Not only do they have the traditional class system in this game where you have medics and you have your support players and stuff like that, and you have your assault players who actually carry sledgehammers since, you know, there's not many vehicles in this game. I believe you can play with vehicles, but usually people opt out of that and they just want to play infantry only. But the assault class has like a sledgehammer that literally destroys any surface in the game. When I talk about destructibility in this game being phenomenal, it is 10 million times better than the uh, destruction in Battlefield 2042. You can can destroy, blow up, or just do whatever you want to any part of these maps. These city maps in this game are absurd. You can literally take a sledgehammer and break any surface you want through there and create your own path to enemies if you truly want to. The possibilities are limitless with this game. And not only are the maps completely destructible, but at the same time, there is an option between every single voting phase, since there is a server browser in this game, so you don't get booted out of every single game. You know, you're allowed to play through a full rotation of the maps because you are allowed to choose what you want to play, which is fantastic. But along with daytime, you can also choose nighttime variants for each and every map, which pretty much require you to put on night vision goggles. You can have lasers like you see right here. And at the same time, it's kind of like Modern Warfare 2019 realism mode, where you have to, you know, use the laser to actually aim. You don't look through the red dot or anything like that. I think it's very cool. It adds a different vibe to the game, a different atmosphere, and I absolutely love it. Instead of daytime raids where everything is absolutely chaotic, nighttime allows you to sneak around and take different approaches, breach into buildings easier without being seen, and handle close quarter combat a lot differently. It's just phenomenal. And like I said, it adds extra layers to the gameplay so it doesn't get boring and repetitive like Battlefield 2042, for example, where we're only playing with the same weapons every game, and we play the same map every single game because there's no server browser, and it constantly keeps putting us on the same map because it re the lobby every time. There's a lot of issues with that game that make it bland, but this game, every single time I play it and every hour that goes by, it seems to be a different experience and a different way to play this overall game, and I love that. At the end of the day, will this game completely stomp out Battlefield? I don't think so. But is it doing numbers on it? Yes. I mean, currently, it's destroying Battlefield 2042 when it comes to actual player count. 
and it's actually pretty popular in the whole Battlefield community. Again, like I said, I highly suggest checking it out if you have a PC or any type of computer or laptop. It doesn't matter. It's very easy to run. It's on the Steam Marketplace, and it's completely free right now. And even if this game does go for $15 like they were talking about before, with all honesty, with the amount of content in the game, I wouldn't be angry at that price tag. I've seen a lot beefier price tags for less than a product like this. And this game has so many weapons, so many attachments, so many cameras to grind for, so many maps in the rotation, and they're still working on adding more things into the game. And on top of that, it's not glitchy nor buggy at all. Yeah, I have a few issues here and there, and some of the connections are pretty bad when it comes to the server browser, but I think those things will be polished off over time, and like I said, as long as the gunplay and the gameplay is smooth and fluent, I'm happy. And it is. You know, Battlefield 2042 is a AAA game that they've been working on for years and years, 10 plus years, they've been in the production of, you know, polishing and perfecting that engine that they use, and they still can't get it right. The whole community knows now that when a Battlefield game releases, it's going to be bad in the beginning, and over time it gets fixed. But why does it have to be like that? Why do we have to be embarrassed and know that every time a game releases, it's going to be absolutely bugged to death. And we, the community, have to polish it off and find these things for them. Why can't it be the opposite way around? Why can this never change, especially with all the experience that DICE has in the industry? Makes no logical sense to me. But again, guys, thank you so much for tuning into this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like, bum, say hey, leave a dislike. Also, for brand new, enjoy the content. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button. Also, if you want to chat me, there's two ways to do so. I have a Twitter and a Discord. Both will be in the description. And also, if you want to catch me live streams of video games and over on Twitch. Link that is in the description as well. But guys, thanks so much for tuning in. See you all next one. Peace out.